What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2025 Honda HRV, courtesy of Sioka Honda of Hanover in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because it's a very good looking compact SUV in my opinion. You also get two years or 24,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. That's gonna save you a little bit of money there. Also, excellent reliability. Just take a look at the Consumer Reports magazine for that. That will substantiate that. That is what this thing is known for, lasting forever. And if you were curious, this one is going to be competing with the Mazda CX-30, Toyota Corolla Cross, and Volkswagen Taos, just to name a few. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one, from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing and size. As you can imagine, there are a few different trim levels for the 2025 HRV. You got the LX starting at $25,100, which is a $1,000 bump from the 2024 model year, in case you were curious. You got the Sport, which is the one we are in today, starting at $27,200. And lastly, the EXL going for $29,200. That was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, you can do that. Simply add $1,500 then to any of those prices. But regardless of the trim level that you go with the power plant on the hrv is going to be the same powering the little beast is a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 158 horsepower at 6500 rpm 138 pound feet of torque coming in at 4200 rpm that power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through a cvt zero to 60 time approximately 9.5 seconds in case you were curious there with mpg numbers coming in at 26 in the city 32 on the highway for the front wheel drive 25 city 30 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel so you got to appreciate that but before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the hrv i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a drive mode toggle switch located directly behind the shifter but drive modes will include normal econ snow and then there's a sport driving mode actually on the shifter if you slide it back one more time from drive but ultimately adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the climate control settings then as well so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straight away let's put the hrv RV here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2025 HRV here up to speed. All right, we are in sport driving mode. I'm just going to pull out onto the highway here. Let's go. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's loud. <laughs> Dang, is it loud? Um, yeah, holding the RPMs of the kind of upper range there, which is kind of nice for an acceleration. And maybe that's because I was in sport driving mode. But having said that, it's not the quickest. It's really loud, though. So it sounds like it's really quick. I'm sure you guys heard that. But yeah, it's 0 to 69.5. It's definitely not the quickest out there, but it's not the worst either. I mean, you got the Mitsubishi Mirage for that. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is the more you drive a vehicle, the more you get used to it. It's kind of like bad visibility in like a Camaro or a 370Z or something like that. You just get used to it. That's what the comment section is always going to tell you. So anyways, you will get used to it. Not the quickest thing in the world, but that's okay. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12.3 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 12.2 inch solid rear discs. And since nobody is behind me here, I like it. The braking feels on the firm side of things. So definitely instantly brings you to a stop. It's not a soft braking feel, which is traditionally what you find in a lot of SUVs. So I like that. It's more of the sportier side of things when it comes to the braking feel at least. So I do appreciate that. But then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So I came in to this kind of thinking like this is going to be more or less a uh, raised up Civic and the Civic's ride quality really isn't that great but I can tell you if you're comparing those two the HRV versus the Civic if you want a little better ride quality this is a noticeable difference between the two because that was actually the last car that I reviewed so ride quality is so much better in the HRV compared to the Civic if you wanted that but then touching on steering feel it's actually really good like it's not crazy like it's like sports car good but 
it's on the heavier side of things. Traditionally in SUVs, you find a loose steering feel and that is not the case in the HRV. It's weighted kind of more so on the heavier side of things, which I like. It instantly points you in the direction that you want to go. So more of a playful steering feel. Again, uh, that's typically what Honda is known for anyway. So I like it. Well done, Honda, for that. As far as cabin noise goes, this is perfect. We're going 48 miles per hour right now. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. You get a little bit of road noise, but the wind noise is definitely held at bay. I could tell you that, but um, it's pretty much as I would expect the HRV to uh, uh, perform like when it comes to cabin noise. So it's perfectly fine there. And touching our rear visibility, I could see 100% perfectly fine out the back. So you are 100% not going to have any issues there either. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Honda HRV. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 Honda HRV, finished in platinum white pearl. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one with us here today. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the HRV is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number three, indicating that the HRV is built and assembled in Mexico, believe it or not. So, in case you were curious about that. But starting up front, LED headlights do come standard on all trim levels across the board with LED daytime running lights, of course. Also, automatic feature coming with that along with automatic high beams for all trim levels as well. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. Did want to also mention though, in terms of the grill, it is going to be specific depending upon the trim level that you go with. So at least for the sport trim level, the sport trim level is going to get kind of its own grill style, whereas the other two trims are going to look similar. So didn't want to mention that as well. Well, and you guys can see down to the bottom corners there, you also have front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics there. So pretty nice. I think it looks so dang good up front. I like the styling. Honda has been doing really good with their styling lately in my personal opinion, but Anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the HRV, black window surrounds do come standard. Rear privacy glass to go along with that. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for the LX and EXL. But then of course you get gloss black side mirrors for the sport that we have with us here today. Heated side mirrors though coming on the sport and EXL and then you get LED integrated turn signals for the sport and EXL trim levels then as well. Then taking a look at the wheel setup, you actually get a different design depending upon the trim level that you go with so three different wheel setups then 17 inch silver painted alloys for the LX 18 inch gloss black alloys for our sport that's what you guys are looking at and then 17 inch machine finish alloys for the EXL but that pretty much rounds out the side profile so they'll go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back of the HRV all the way to the top you will find a body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper one of the cool little things about the all-wheel drive badging is not actually found on the rear lift gate here it's actually found uh, via sticker just underneath of that rear window wiper so kind of interesting I kind of like it but they're taking a look at the rear um, taillights there they are LED taillights that does come standard for all trim levels across the board so that's pretty cool single exhaust outlet down below but the finish is going to differ depending upon the trim level of course for the sport trim level you guys get what you are looking at right now which looks amazing you get this bright chrome tip but for the other trim levels it is tucked away unfortunately I think it looks so dang good exposed like that well done, Honda. I love it. But having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the HRV, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate that does come standard for all trim levels. So there's a rubberized button on the lift gate itself. Just press in on that and lift up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 24.4 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 55.1 cubic feet then. You do get LED cargo lighting that does come standard for all trims. So that's pretty cool. Tie-down anchors, there is a 12-volt power outlet in that 
cargo area as well. Cool thing though, if you lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find some in-floor storage and it's compartmentalized. So you got different little sections back there. So that was kind of cool. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that in-floor storage, you're actually going to find a spare tire, which you guys know I love compared to the fix of flat at least. So that's pretty cool too. But then making your way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 37.7 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the rear seats there, but not a ton going on for the rear passengers. You do get a little bit of storage back there, but no rear ventilation, no rear center armrest, no charging ports or anything fancy like that. But then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats coming with the LX and the Sport, heated front seats for the Sport and EXL trim levels. You got to love that. Eight weight power driver seat for the EXL, leather seating for the EXL, and then you get some cool orange contrast stitching for our Sport trim level that we have here today. I will say though, as far as seat comfort goes, even though they're manually adjustable cloth seats, it actually wasn't that bad. I certainly didn't have any issues in seat comfort, at least on my short little test drive here today. So I don't mind it, but let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is gonna be leather wrapped if you go with the Sport or EXL trim levels. And of course with the Sport, you got the orange contrast stitching yet again. So that looks pretty good. And now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your Honda logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear lift gate there, or unlock it I should say. And uh, the whole button, that is gonna be your remote start, which comes on the Sport and the XL trim levels in case you were curious. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, you are looking at a digital gauge cluster. It looks amazing. Tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. You got a digital speedometer front and center. You got outside temperature. You got a speed limit recognition as well. You got how many miles you have left until you hit empty on the left side. Of course, there are steering wheel mounted controls, so you can kind of adjust what is on there. I think the only thing that would have made it better is if maybe the uh, gauge cluster adjusted the loadouts a little bit, depending upon maybe the drive mode that you put it in, or maybe you could just adjust the different looks in general without changing the drive mode. Either one I think would have been a, a nice addition to this, kind of like the Volkswagen Taos does, for example, but, but better, like Mercedes-Benz does actually. So anyways, the gauges are perfectly fine though. I just would have liked to have seen a little bit more if I'm being a critic here. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. Power mirror, if you wanted that, that, that comes on the EXL trim level only. LED interior lighting does come standard. Wireless phone charger for the EXL. Dual zone climate control for the EXL. Ambient LED lighting for the EXL. Auto dimming rear view mirror for the EXL. You got it. So pretty much the EXL gets all the creature comforts when it comes to interior quality, but just elaborating a little bit on what we have today. Um, just in front of the cup holders, you got a little bit of rubberized storage to put your cell phone there along with the USB charging port. Of course, your cup holders are just behind that. Surrounding the shifter, you have this nice soft touch material with orange contrast, stitching a little bit of gloss black finishes surrounding the shifter as well. Honda did that very well. Just under the electromechanical parking brake and drive mode buttons, you got a little bit more rubberized storage for perhaps the passenger cell phone right there. So I thought that was a pretty good idea. And there's charging ports there as well. Then within the center armrest, you would think it wouldn't be a lot of space because this is a smaller SUV, but there's actually a decent amount of space in there. So quite a bit of space. I definitely don't mind that more so than I'm used to finding in this class at least. So I like the silver door handles. It's a nice little added touch. They could have left that in matte black plastic. Um, that's typically what the competition will do. I like the honeycomb mesh design in typical Honda fashion there, but the passenger side glove box and the climate control information there. So. I think Honda didn't do that bad of a job when it comes to interior quality. A lot of soft touch material in terms of the driving position when I was resting my elbows when I was driving, that's soft touch as well for both elbows. So yeah, I don't mind it. I think Honda did a pretty good job actually, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. You're gonna find a seven inch color touchscreen display for the LX and Sport, and then a nine inch color touchscreen display for the EXL. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard either way. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, same thing, standard for all trim levels. Of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. So when it comes to the sound systems, you get a different sound system dependent upon the trim level that you go with, kind of like the wheels yet again. So four speakers and 180 watts for the LX, six speakers and 180 watts for the Sport, and then eight speakers and 180 watts for the EXL. So the wattage is gonna stay the same, but the amount of speakers is going to change. So that's kind of cool. So we got the six speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we've got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. Uh, 
Um, yeah, that was FM radio, by the way. That wasn't Sirius XM or anything fancy like that, but I, it was okay. Uh, <laughs> clarity was pretty much what a six speaker sound system would you would expect that to sound like. Um, actually a little more bass than I expected, but it's a six speaker sound system. It was, uh, it was okay. Good podcast sound system. I'll put it that way. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen, at least is when you do put the HRV in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. A few different views as well, which is kind of nice in the bottom left hand corner there. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so let me start with the best part here. IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest rating given by IIHS, so you cannot get any better than that. You gotta love that. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard, driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, high pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, of course, Honda Sensing. So you guys probably heard of that before. That's their suite of advanced safety features that includes collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, traffic jam assist, and traffic sign recognition as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the HRV for the price point and for what it is, you get incredible safety with this one. You can't beat an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. So that's kind of always the first thing you probably want to look for in a new vehicle is you want to make sure you're going to be safe in it. So you got to love that. Also, excellent reliability. Go ahead and check out Consumer Reports. I guarantee you they're going to give this thing at least an above average reliability rating, which is excellent these days in a turbocharged world. You got a naturally aspirated four cylinder with proven reliability. So there's actually nothing wrong with that. Uh, you got LED lighting in here too, which is pretty stinking cool. Typically, um, manufacturers will put the halogen bulbs to save a little bit of money there so I don't mind that uh, great steering feel as well uh, more so than I expected but Honda typically does crush it with that Honda and Mazda specifically their steering feels are just they're just excellent so <laughs> no issues there as far as the rear improvement goes I think really the only thing I can think of that comes to mind is the rear passengers get shafted a little bit here in the HRV so typically the competition will at least give you USB charging ports for the second row passengers not always the rear ventilation although I would have preferred that at least on the EXL trim level but at least give some rear USB charging ports I would say just because you know there may be some kids in the back and everyone has a smart device if not a tablet at this age in time so USB charging ports are kind of a must in my personal opinion but anyways that pretty much rounds out this one you guys let me know what you think of the HRV in the comments section below I do read your comments I'm always interested in talking cars with everybody so that's about it for this one feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that's what we do here in this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold